You're listening to The Come Up. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on The Come Up, a podcast created to showcase the talents and lives of the best young players on the rise. With me, I have Jacob Johnson and Nate Thompson. I am Michael Gross, and today we bring on a midfielder from Syracuse Men's Soccer. He's a part of the number 12 ranked recruiting class nationally, according to College Soccer News, and here with us today is Giorgio Koshevsky. Welcome to the come up, Giorgio. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be on today. So let's let's start with this. I want to start all the way back uh, to your childhood. Like what made you want to play soccer growing up and who kind of influenced you if there was anyone there? Yeah, so when I was young, uh, I didn't have much interest in a single sport. I was just one of those kids, you know, playing every single sport I could get my hands on, feet on, um, till I was about three years old, and my dad just, you know, took me to the soccer field, said, you want to go kick a ball around, and I fell in love with the game ever since. So then, what what were some of the other sports that you went and tried to, you know, mess around with and try and feel it out to see what you wanted? I uh, I felt out, you know, basketball and baseball pretty much with the other two. Uh, my mom, you know, was not the biggest fan of soccer. She wanted me to play baseball my whole life, but I just didn't really connect with it as much as I did soccer. So why did you end up picking soccer then? You know, I just went to the field that one day with my dad and we later started to just, you know, started to watch YouTube videos together. We started to watch more soccer games. And then a little, I would say probably a year after I watched uh, my first, you know, big Premier League game, I watched uh, Cristiano Ronaldo and I just fell in love with him and everything about him. I've been trying to simulate everything since since that day. So you just brought up Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, do you model your game after any other great footballers or look up to anyone else? Yeah, you know, all the – I try to take as much as I can from each player, try to learn as much as I can. I'm watching each game. But I know I play center mid. Obviously, Ronaldo doesn't play that. But uh, one of my big, uh, you know, players I look up to is De Bruyne. I feel like I, you know, have the same type of mentality as him and try to play the same midfield way as him. So – we're gonna we're gonna jump to your high school career. You didn't you didn't play high school. You played for Empire United, which has been an elite soccer academy in Western New York since its inception back in two thousand seven. How much did this academy team improve your game and help you become a more well rounded player to be like De Bruyne or like Cristiano, like the people that you look up to? Yeah, you know I literally thank everything I can to those coaches and the time they took out of their days to come to practice, you know, with set schedule and everything. They were always by my side, you know, pulling me to the side saying what these small details on what I can do and what I can do to improve. And it's just been amazing ever since, you know, I've been playing Empire since I was 10 years old. And from from day one, they've been by my side. Just they look out for you. They, look, they want the best for each player. What were, what were some of the things that, you know, wh- when you were coming in at, at 10 years old, obviously you're not fully um, skilled, fully well-rounded yet. Um, what were some of the things that some of those coaches helped you really dig in and detail that uh, made you become a better player and helped you become the player you are today? I think one of the biggest things was just the confidence because I was coming in at 10 years old, like, Obviously, I wasn't fully matured yet, and I was playing on a team that was U14, so most of the guys were about three to four years older than me, and they just told me that, you know, you're here for a reason. You're, you're, you're good. You, you got to have confidence to do what you know how to do, and uh, I thank them tremendously for that. So then you played from 10 years old to, what, 18? Yeah. So then did you play Empire – in place of your high school, in place of your high school team? 
Yeah, yeah. So from when I was 10 all the way till senior year, I played Empire and just it was unfortunate that I couldn't play for, you know, Liverpool High School. It's where I grew up. I'd love to, but it's just the better route for me, I feel like. Yeah, it's it's probably just a more uh, well-rounded and it'll probably help you get better connections. And it, and it must have because you ended up going to Syracuse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you you entered this this pretty big stage in soccer when you did decide to play for Empire United instead of uh, playing for high school Liverpool, leading your team to the knockout stages of the inaugural USDA Winter Cup in Kansas. What was that feeling like knowing you had such a big role in that Winter Cup run? Yeah, it was a it was a great feeling because since I was ten years old, like we would always talk about the playoffs. You know, the academy there was the the playoffs. You got to make the playoffs and all the teams before me, you know, we never did. We never made the playoffs. They would stress that. And then we had a couple of great teams. You know, I was a lot of good friends with the older guys, and they've missed the playoffs by, you know, a couple of games here and there. And then my junior year, I was the captain of the U-17 team. And, you know, we we had a great year. We fell off in the spring, late in the spring, but we had a great year. We missed the playoffs by one point. So, you know, coming back in the senior year, we were we were ready to go, and I mean, I felt like I could lead the team, but I couldn't have done it without all the, all the help from the other guys. We uh, we put the work in over the summer, and over those first couple of months, getting ready for uh, the DA Cup in the winter, and we just we showed everybody what we knew we, we could. So you talk you talk about being the captain your junior and senior year. Um, you've had a pretty good career with Empire United. You registered 21 goals, you had 28 assists, while being named the captain. How did you grow into such a large role with such a youth mind, I guess? Yeah, you know, I feel like one of the, the biggest uh, the biggest things in that sense was my coach. He pulled me aside from day one of preseason and he said, you know, he looked at me and said, what do you want? What do you want to do with this team? And I said, I want to be the captain. And he said, I don't deny that you're you're up there on the side of the ball like you can you can make the passes you can put the runs in but he's like being captain is more than that you have to you got to lead your team on and off the field and you just have to be there for your 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 teammates and uh from day one he even told me that he was like you got to start spending more time with these guys off the field whether it's talking about soccer or not talking about soccer and developing those relationships and he was 100% right because once I started to develop those relationships, I felt like we uh, we really made an impact. And it's got to be hard to develop those relationships right off the bat because you're thrown into a bunch of guys where where you may ne- you may never have played with them before, right? So you're you're in this new environment, or maybe it's not a new environment, but it's new people around you in that environment. What's the hardest part of adjusting to that? And making sure that you're building the team chemistry and you're taking that leadership role that you have and sort of uh, branching your talents and your knowledge off to the other players you're playing with. Yeah, I think the, honestly, for me, the hardest part was the off the field stuff. I knew on the field, you know, I've always wanted to be a leader. I knew I could say it with my voice, do it with my legs, but it was off the field where I was, like I said, I was on the team when I was 10 and I was playing with you 14 year olds. So from 10 till my junior year, I, all I knew was I was friends with the older kids. The kids on the older teams were in my carpool. They were the ones I was spending time with when I had free time outside of soccer. So to just like kind of push them away a little bit more and spend more time off the field with more of my teammates that were going to be on my team was probably the hardest part for me. But did they like, did they give you any advice that you took on and, and you sort of used later in your, your empire career? Yeah. You know, the, I learned so much from the older guys and the way that we had a bunch of great leaders with them. And I noticed like the way they acted around like team meals and they, they were always first to everything. You know, they got there, they said they cleaned everything. They were first there, last to leave, and they would always let other people, like, eat first. They would eat last, stuff like that. Like, it's those little details that I knew from, like, being a bystander watching those guys. I knew that that would make a big difference with my team. So then you made a big difference with that team, but now you're coming on to – or now you came on to a Syracuse team that is Division One, so it's probably some of the same caliber players. 
but it's a whole different environment. So you have to take those leadership qualities that you had at Empire and showcase them at a much higher level. Um, before we talk about Syracuse, did, did you have any other offers from any other schools that you were considering going to? Yeah, uh, during the recruiting process, I was, uh, I was pretty interested in Louisville. I took my official visit to Louisville and you know, I went there on a summer ID camp and I, I performed well and they, they liked me then. And uh, yeah, I was, I was pretty, I liked it a lot, but I was like, all right, like I knew Syracuse. I knew I've been growing up. I've been going to every single game. So I, I always had them in the back of my head and I didn't want to make any last decisions, you know, before I heard from them. So it was really Louisville, um, Yale. And I was talking to UNC for a little bit, but those were the main ones. So just Syracuse, you know, being grown up, being around there, that's kind of what made you lean towards that decision is, you know, growing up in Liverpool, Syracuse is close by, um, kind of the at home atmosphere of it. Is that what made you kind of to decide to go with Syracuse? Yeah, the the at home atmosphere and the coaching staff, you know, I've known the assistant coach is Yuka Maslin. I've worked with him many of times in my career when I was younger. He was one of the, like, he helped out with the academy all the time. And from day one, I just, I knew that he was just one of the best coaches that I've ever, like, been a part of. He would always pull me aside, give me tips. And it just, just the way he, like, protected his players and everything, I knew that I, I just wanted to play for him. So then you went and played for him. And obviously that's a testament to his recruiting abilities. Syracuse was named the 12th ranked recruiting class nationally according to College Soccer News. And, you know, you made a statement almost right off the rip. You assisted your very first, uh, you assisted in your very first collegiate game versus uh, number two team in the nation in Pitt. Walk us through that, that game and the, the adrenaline rush you must have had coming onto that field against the second best team in the nation and doing the work to be able to go out and get an assist and, and help your team through that. Yeah, you know, it was, it was an awesome feeling, you know, even – just getting ready for the game, the the meal before, the spending time with the guys, just realizing that, you know, you're going to be playing in the ACC. It's it's going to be a battle out there. And I remember from as soon as we, we were eating our meal and we walked from the from Manly, we walked to the stadium. And I remember just being a little kid and I remember looking up at like all the, the players, you know, walking, doing their walk. And I just like would always look at my dad thinking like I, I want to be one of them. And it hit me once, you know, I, I got my my boots on and I started walking to the field. I was like, I'm one of those guys. And it was it was a great feeling. And going out there and playing for some like a team that's so close to home, it was an awesome feeling. So <clears throat> with things being a little harder due to COVID right now, and obviously nothing is the same. Um, how is how has the atmosphere and the vibes been at Syracuse so far, even due to COVID with the soccer program? It's definitely been different. You know, it's been a challenge. We had one positive case last semester, you know, a little, it had a little throwback, but uh, and I felt like we've dealt with it well. We were in every single game, you know, I mean, we didn't win any, but we were in every single game. We forced overtimes. We came out with ties against some of the best teams in the country, but, you know, we've been putting work in and over the, over the break, you know, we've been grinding and hopefully we can come out with better results in the spring. So you, you talk about all those games where you had close moments and played good double overtime and all that. I personally watched you at Syracuse FC when you took the free kick in the national playoffs. Um, do you have a favorite moment that you had in your soccer career, if not that free kick? Favorite moment. I would probably say my favorite moment was last year in Academy. Going, uh, going down to Florida and we needed to win the last game uh, by a matter of three goals. Three, we needed to win by a deficit of three goals and somehow, some way we got it. And, you know, I scored the second goal to, I scored the penalty. And then with about, I want to say 10 minutes left, I put in a corner and one of my boys got up big and he headed it in. And uh, we actually, we didn't know that we needed three goals. We thought we needed a fourth. So we were going for the fourth and uh, we didn't get it. So, at the end of the game, you know, we were, we weren't too happy, but 
then all of a sudden the officials came over and like they're congratulating us saying that we got through and I just remember that feeling was it was amazing it was actually awesome so you got the characteristics of the grit like the tenacity like just buckling down putting your head down doesn't matter the deficit you don't know what it is you don't know what it can be you just put your head down you played that entire game like it was your last and then you ended up coming out on top moving on what was it like it was amazing you know it was it was crazy to be in that game because we all knew that we didn't think we had much of a chance to get through but we were saying all right if we get second place you know we did good we came out of one of the hardest groups like let's strive for second place let's go out there let's we took it game by game let's just go play this last game we'll win this last game we'll see where that brings us and you know good things happen when you just take it step by step and it was just amazing to go through that moment so what advice you know being at a d1 school now and as, as a freshman what advice would you give to the younger generation um not even just athletics but but any advice that you could give i would just say like keep grinding you know like there's times where there's going to be setbacks in your in your career where you're not going to get picked or you're not going to start a game and the best way to just show somebody that you care is to just go back and just start grinding. Just just put your head down, you know. You got to outwork everybody. And when you do that, only good things can come from that. And that's on and off the field because you got to do that in the classroom. You got to do it on the field as well. And is there any, like, advice that you would like to give to your younger self that um, you wish you knew back then that you know now? I would just say to always keep your head up. Like I said, to keep grinding, you know, I had setbacks in my life that I probably took, took too far and let it hit me too hard, but you know, things happen for a reason. You gotta just, you gotta get up and go after it the next day. Yeah. And like you said, setbacks happen all the time. We're in a setback right now with the pandemic, but you know, you have to keep your head up and you have to keep pushing through. Right. And that's what, you guys and and hopefully Syracuse is going to do come next season. You guys are going to bounce back, right? And you're gonna you're gonna go out and make sure you win some more games. Obviously, yeah. You know, all we can do is put in the work now, and we'll see where it takes us. Giorgio, thank you so much for joining us on the come up. It was a pleasure, and obviously, good luck to you. We hope that you continue a, an incredible career so far here at. Uh, Syracuse and thank you for, once again coming for coming on the come up thank you guys pleasure is all mine